Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. Appreciate you doing this. Uh, so you're taking over as safeties coach after being with the team for some time now. How was uh, how do you feel about being the presiding face over that group? And and what what's been your experience so far through what's uh, what's a pretty different off season? Yeah, well, um, first talking about just the uh, transition here. You know, it's been a pretty smooth transition, obviously, since I've been here. Uh, since 2018 with uh, Coach Rabel and the, and the Titans. So it's been good to be with the safeties, obviously, with uh, Kenny and KB, and then uh, two guys that we drafted in 18 and 19, Dan Crookshank and, and Amani, and then a couple new faces as well. So that transition, obviously, has been pretty easy. And then as far as this uh, unique offseason, having the background with the guys for the past two seasons, um, I would say it's been uh, as smooth as possible, obviously, being on Zoom, just like we're on Zoom right now. And also, um, <clears throat> you know, just being having a relationship with them. I've known them. It wasn't my first time meeting them. So it, uh, it, it went pretty well, as can be expected, as far as with the Zoom meetings. Karan? What's up, Coach Booker? Uh, we know you, you've worked with the safeties, you know, a lot over the past uh, couple years. And with, with Amani Hooker and so much more sub packages with Big Nickel, do you feel he's a guy that could see increased snaps in, in that in that package? So when you watch Damani's film in in uh, college, you know what what I saw was a guy that was able to play multiple positions at a high level at, at Iowa, well coached, and uh, was fairly diverse. So when he came in here, um, you know last year he was able to get some some playing time on, on defense and some of our sub packages, and uh, we look for him to compete you know, in those packages as well. That diversity that he that he has, uh, you know, hopefully will be able to be used this year. Um, kind of too early to tell exactly what type of things we would do regarding exact packages to run, you know, big nickel, all that type of stuff. But I do know that, you know, uh, Amani does have some versatility and, and ability to play safety uh, for us in some other positions if needed. And as far as that, packages concerns like especially with the slot position you see teams putting bigger receivers you see them flexing tight ends how does he match up to to both of those aspects you know from, from an offense yeah I think um he's a guy that you know like I said when you watch his film and do it in, in college he was able to do some of those things in the slot as well as at safety and um <clears throat> you know we have um, the ability in our packages to to move some guys around. Like I said, probably a little bit too early to tell, you know, where exactly we're going to plug and play guys. Um, but he's been doing a good job, and he also learns quickly. Uh, he's a guy that, that has a real good football IQ, and uh, happy to have him back there. Thank you. David Beauclair. Scott, your title's different, but as Tron said, you you know you've worked with the safeties. In what ways, if any, is your is your day to day job different now this year than it was? Well, obviously, you know, when I got here, I uh, started working, and you know, titles are are one thing, but it's about just doing whatever you're asked to do. And so, you know, under Coach Brave and, and and Dean Pease, you know, they had me working alongside with the safeties um and so i guess you know on a day in and day out basis there may be a little bit things that that have changed just with the title but but in all honesty um you know the overall situation and function of how we do practice and all that type of stuff really hasn't changed that much um and and you know my work with the safeties has been pretty consistent uh from year one until now and uh you know it's just all about being able to <clears throat> continue to improve all those guys, whether it be Kevin Byard and, and Kenny, and then, you know, Amani and Dane, and then uh, Ibrahim and, and Josh, just trying to improve them on a daily basis. And in terms of what, what is asked of modern safeties, how, how I guess, prototypical are, are Byard and Vaccaro as, as, a, as a tandem? Are, are they what everybody's looking for in a lot of ways, do you think? Yeah, I honestly think it's a great time to be a safety uh, because people are looking for guys that can do it all. You know, uh, back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you were just looking for a guy that could be in the box and then one guy to be in the post. But 
Now you're looking for a guy that can play deep. He can play close to the box. He can blitz. He can do some things in sub packages that may be a different position. So I think it's a great time to be a safety. And when you uh, when you're talking about the guys that we have, uh, we put a lot on their plate. We have a lot of high expectations for those guys. And, and you know, we feel like we've continued to see uh, them grasp our defense at a high level. And, and, you know, we continue to want to see them play at a high level on Sundays. Thank you very much. Paul. Hey, Book, appreciate the time. Um, working on something about Shane and, and looking to illustrate uh, his sense of humor. I was wondering if you could give me any context there. <laughs> oh, um, sense of humor. <clears throat> that, that's a good one, Paul. Um, look, I, I don't know if I have any specific examples of, of, of you know, him being – I don't know who you want, Chris Rock or whoever up there, uh, Kevin Hart. You know, I don't, I don't know if he's a stand-up comedian. But I do think that he is able to do a great job relating with the players. Um, and, and during camp, there are times that, uh, you know, you need some levity, right? You need to break the monotony of camp. And he's done a good job of that, whether it be, you know, uh, showing film of, of maybe a coach uh, that's working with, one of the guys or one of the teams and, you know, maybe doesn't have one of his best moments. Maybe he'll show that film to the defensive staff or defensive uh, unit uh, or, or just, you know, kind of sarcastically getting on a guy. But I think he does a really good job breaking up the monotony of camp and uh, keeping the guy's attention. Appreciate it. Doc, with the follow-up. Yeah, Coach, just to circle back to your group, given given how much matchup defense you guys play, how valuable is it to have so many different guys with such varied skill sets? I know versatility being something that you guys harp on in particular. Yeah, I think that starts up top with John Robinson and his staff that do a great job of identifying guys, and, and as well as uh, Mike Brable. And then obviously it goes down to us, you know, being able to do what the players can do. And so, you know, I think in the back end, especially in the safety room, we do, uh, you know, really value versatility, like you're saying. And it's exciting to be around these guys. And it's exciting that these guys uh, are they, – they demand a lot from each other in that versatility-wise, you know, as far as Kenny and, and Kevin demanding from each other that both of them can do anything on the field that the other person can do so that, uh, you know, our opponents can't get a beat on what we're doing. And then that trickles down to, to our younger guys as well. Appreciate you. I think we got our last question here, Jim. Scott, appreciate your time. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, you probably asked, have been asked about Imani Hooker already, but I was hoping you could kind of give me an idea of what you saw from him last season and maybe what's the next step for him heading into year two. Yeah, so – you know, I, I said it before, but, you know, coming out of Iowa, we saw a guy that um, played at a high level, was versatile, had good ball skills. And, um, you know, last season playing on some special teams and then playing in some sub packages, we saw a little bit of what he could do. And, and look, in all honesty, we're looking for him to just keep on improving every day, to grasp our defense and, and to be able to put himself and our defense in the best position to be successful. Um, you know, and the one thing about Imani is that, he is extremely uh, smart and um, very knowledgeable of not just his own position at safety, but other positions too and how it affects the defense. So that's a positive for him. And then um, obviously him just continuing to, you know, get comfortable with the NFL game because the NFL game is different than the college game. And so uh, getting comfortable with the, everything that the NFL has to do. And, uh, you know, you can see that a little bit, going from the first game of the year to the last game of the year, and hopefully that'll, that'll continue this season. And Chris Jackson, I mean, I know he's a versatile guy who can do a number of different things. Does he spend, I guess, most of his time with you? And, and what, what have your impressions been of him right out of the gate? Uh, you know, Chris has come in, and, uh, you know, he has a lot of guys to, to look up to, obviously, with uh, the, the um, veteran presence that we have in the defensive back room as a whole, not just talking safety-wise, but, but also corner-wise. So 
I think he's come in and shown the fact that he's able to retain knowledge. And then, um, you know, obviously it's a little early to tell anything about on the field. We haven't done anything on the field, so hard to say about on the field, but at least his retention of knowledge has, has been a good sign so far. And anything for you as far as your coaching uh assignment change this year from from last year to this year or you just allowed maybe more time to do what you have been doing with the safe yeah I think that's honestly what it is I'm not gonna get all overblown with titles and all that type of stuff you know um I think <clears throat> I've been fortunate enough to be with the safeties for the past two seasons and I guess I got a title change this year but uh like I told the, the other person that asked the question you know day to day really hasn't changed uh, uh, too whole heck of a lot for me. And I got one last one just about the relationship between Kenny and Kevin. I mean, I guess anytime you got two safeties that have played for each other a couple of years, they know each other better. I imagine that shows up on the field and in, in the building. How comforting is it to you to have two vets back there uh, that can show other guys the way? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really matter how comforting it is for me. It's got to be comforting for the for the team. And so, you know, what I like is that both of them uh, are unselfish and they literally, literally all they want to do is have the Titans win uh, as many games as possible. And so, you know, whether it be Kevin being on uh, the punt unit for his past five seasons uh, with the Titans, whether it's Kenny being on kickoff, whether it's Kenny playing multiple positions for us, anything we ask those guys to do, they do. And that's the example uh, that younger players see. Um, and then they also see the dedication that these guys have, um, you know, throughout this Zoom meetings, um, the questions that they're asking and just how they want to get more detailed into our defense going into the third year. So um, and then just besides football, um, you know, there's definitely a good example that they give of, you know, how to be fathers and husbands. Both those guys are those. And so uh, it's just really, really great to see and, and something that may not happen often that you have these guys at this time in the career being able to spend multiple seasons together uh, and, and being able to play well on the field.